Welcome to Studio 90 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where action is now complete in the second round of group matches in the U17-18 division. And with today's results, teams have a clear picture of what they'll need to do on the final match day in order to have a chance to play for the national championship. New York Red Bulls took full points in the 1-0 win against local rivals PDA, while Dallas Texans held on for a vital draw against Patty Adores, despite playing a man down for 50 minutes. Both teams now have four points, Patty Adores on top of Group 1, holding a slight edge over Dallas in goal differential. You know, it's every individual player was up for the game today, maybe because it was a derby match. Uh, I thought we were a little bit flat in our first game. Uh, obviously, everything to play for now in the last game, three points means we're still alive on day number three with the chance to go to the final. So, see how the results go, and you know, we'll look to uh, get a good result in the last one. Great result for us, very proud of of the way the players performed after that point and the effort that they put in. And also, you know, we're still able to cause them a few problems. Their goalkeeper made a couple of good, very, very good saves. So all things considered, it's a very good point. Our team is a little disappointed because, you know, a tie is not what they were shooting for. And um, But again, obviously, we also wanted to be smart in the back and make sure we didn't give anything up so we would be in control of the group. So, you know, we feel like we haven't had our best match yet, and so we hope it's uh, in the last two. In the tournament's most entertaining encounter so far, Castle Chelsea FC Academy scored in the 88th minute to earn a 2-2 draw against FC Dallas and maintain their lead over Dallas in the group based on a superior goal differential. Baltimore Bays with their victory now lurk just one point behind. Very good in the first half. Uh, we said it, we're about uh, passion and you know and fight and battling, and we our backs were against the wall. And that's when we were our best. And I thought the first half we showed that we got the goal, uh, we got the man advantage. I thought the second half was the time for us maybe to, to put them put them away, and we kind of relaxed a little bit. We didn't make good decisions in the ball, and uh, you know it's a two over result, but I think it should have been more, and we should have taken advantage of it. Now the fate isn't so much in our hands anymore, so we have to wait and see what happens. Uh, we knew we were going to you know have our hands full today. I think we came out a little bit, uh, you know. We probably gave them too much credit. You know, they're very good, but we got to still do what we like to do. And we just fell back into uh, a shape that we normally don't have, more of a defensive safe shape. Uh, and it, it hurt us in the first half. The second half we came out, we got our wide players a little bit higher. Uh, we joined them from behind, and we were able to pinch them a little bit and, and create some havoc for them. The U15-16 division is back in action Tuesday. And after three draws and only one win on the first match day, the race is wide open for spots in the championship match that will take place July 16th. In addition to covering the 2011 Development Academy Finals Week, Studio 90 is in Germany following the women's national team and their exciting march to the Women's World Cup. You can watch the U.S. women take on France in the semifinal match Wednesday, July 13th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The match will be broadcast live on ESPN, ESPN3.com, and Galavision. That's it for Studio 90 from Milwaukee. We'll see you next time.